Right, well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio up here at TIFF, presented by Celebs.com, Anada, Alex. Um, firstly, congratulations on the film, What Amazing You. Um, Thank you. Thank you. How's it been going around talking about the movie today? Really fun. Yeah. What was the favorite question you were asked? I didn't really have a favorite question. Oh. So I hear you've been We had a really good answer to one of the questions. Yeah. At the Q&A after the screening. They said, well, the, the book, the Henry James novel, spans over 10 years from maybe being like six, seven to a teenager. And one of the, uh, a guy in the audience asked, well, why, he asked the directors, why did you just focus on this first, like, first part of the, the novel and not the entire uh, journey? And, and I said he started that this really whole elaborate question, uh, answer. And then Onada just said, well, it would be a really long film, right? That's right. That's you've, it. You've been acting for a few years now. What, what was the first time you met Alexander? Was it on set, or did you meet beforehand? I think I met beforehand. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Beforehand. Like two weeks before we started, I came to New York and yeah. we hung out. Did you hang out with all the actors in the film for a little while before you started shooting? I didn't hang out with. Julie, I don't think. You didn't see her? No, because she was busy, right? She was out of town working on something. Oh, yeah. No. Um, so it's pretty pretty amazing, obviously, the chemistry. You're, you're really Maisie's safe haven um, in the film. And uh, so obviously she has to feel comfortable with you and have that connection. Um, what do you do? Like, what did you do the first time you met? Like, where did you go? Were you at a coffee shop or something? We were at uh, David's apartment in New York. Yeah. And we kind of... We made, like, a castle. Yeah. And we cut out little people to live in it and a moan, and that's it. Right. Because it really felt like in the film that a lot of those moments were organic. Were they just things that happened as you guys sat around and played, or, or was it tightly scripted? It was, it was, it was scripted. It wasn't all improvised. It was definitely scripted, which makes it even more impressive how amazing Onada is in the film. Um, she just has this phenomenal delivery where it feels so natural and real, and, and it is real. Um, but it was, it was actually scripted. We played around with the scenes quite a bit, like the scene Onada just mentioned, where we, uh, the castle, where that's, it's, it's a scene in the movie as well, yeah. that we kind of. Um, played around with a bit and rewrote it and and and, and, uh, and then on the day we would all we always had a scripted scene but then we'd improvise and ad-lib a bit and uh, so it's kind of a combination so is it is it unusual for you or usual for you to come to a movie where like let's say if you didn't have time with Julianne before but obviously there's a lot of chemistry that needs to go into that kind of performance did you get a chance to rehearse with David and, and Scott there we did yeah I went out about I think 10 days or two weeks before we started um, we came out to New York and sat with <clears throat> with the directors and the the, the, the other actors and, and just kind of um, talked about the scenes, the different relationships and, and, and everything and and also just great just to hang out and get to know each other to, to you know um, in case you need to f like find that chemistry but it took about three seconds that's kind of all we needed then we just hung out because it was fun and you know, you were saying you don't have kids but this movie for me I mean I'm like, all you want to do is reach out and protect Maisie, and, and it makes you want to have kids if you don't have them already. Yeah, and, and it's very, them. very easy to work with Onada. I've worked with some amazing actors before, but it's just, it's just the energy of the, it's so raw and so natural, and um, you just have to be there and, you know, react to whatever she does. Is this kind of the perfect scenario where you're doing, like, a TV show during the year, it keeps you busy, and then during a break, did you do this during a break between seasons? Yeah. And getting to do a film like this in between? Yes, I shot this right after <clears throat> on season four of True Blood. And uh, that's, I mean, I, I read the script. It was, it's, I mean, I'd read the novel a couple of years ago and I, it's a great novel and it was a very interesting take on the novel. Um, and also a very different character. And that's after six, seven, six, seven months of playing Eric Northman on True Blood, I kind of try to find stuff that's, uh, you look for, and, you know, challenges and something that's new and something that you haven't 
done every day for seven months. Uh, that kind of recharges my battery. Uh, and that, uh, like how different, how different is Maisie to you? Not much, not that different. Did you, when you talked to, did you talk like to Damon and Scott about the character and did they want you to try different things and do different things or did you, they just tell you to be yourself? Well, we did a little bit of different things and sometimes we were just ourselves. Had you, had you ever seen Julianne or Alexander on TV or in a movie before you got to meet them and work with them? I only saw them on magazines. I didn't see them in anything because I don't have a TV, so. But your character in the film has a TV in her room. Yeah. She yeah. has two very cool rooms <laughs> in her house. So it looked like you got a lot of toys to play with. And I didn't know Turtles played Monopoly either. So oh, yeah, cool. and you cool. actually got to keep the turtle. Yeah. Did you still have the turtle? Did you name the turtle? Tallulah. Tallulah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, <laughs> you know, this, this film has like so many messages and it's so easy to see, like even from another diet, like her cat Maisie's diet early on, where she's, you know, you just see her asleep next to potato chips and a bottle of Coke or whatever. Uh. Um, but um, did, you, did you read the Henry James novel? Like, how much do you go into that sort of stuff, or do you just kind of... No, I, I definitely read it, and I think um, Sir Claude, my the, the character that, that, I mean, Lincoln's character in the novel is, um, of course, I, there was a lot of inspiration from reading the novel, and, and, and uh, I went back, I mean, I went back before we started the film and reread it again. Uh, um, so that helped a lot. And then, but then again, like, it's very, I think the movie is very different from the novel. And it was, it was weird for me to see Steve Coogan, um, who plays your dad in the movie. Like normally you see him and he's a really funny guy, he's, he's always doing crazy outlandish things. So was he, to you, Anata, was he very, was he very playful between takes? Did you find him to be a very funny guy normally? Or was he more in character and, and kind of more just very businessy? He was fun in between takes. He was? Do you tell lots of jokes and do lots of strange things? I can't remember. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Congrats on the film again. Cheers. <laughs>